Okay, so welcome back to How They Keep You In. And uh, today we're going to talk about um, training training people to have negative uh, interactions with, with people on the outside. So one of the things that uh, happens if you are in a, uh, a, a cult is that you will be... Um, they, they'll kind of turn you into a person who is uh, annoying, who's like somebody who uh, who who somebody on the the outside wouldn't wouldn't like, and they kind of prime you to have negative interactions, and that kind of keeps you in because you you don't know how to have good interactions with people outside. And uh, that that creates a, a barrier for you to get out because you're you're used to interacting with uh, the the crazy the crazy interactions in in the cult. So, uh, so I was about to call you Reverend Jimmy Grace, <laughs> but <laughs> this David Oliverio, would you mind telling us about uh, these? Couple of conversations you've had recently. Well, first we got to clarify the Reverend Jimmy Ray. Yeah, well, we do another show where you play the character. Christian satire. My character is a re- Pentecostal preacher, and Daniel's yeah. the other character. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so you want to know about the two episodes uh, incidents that happened to me a couple weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. You told me about two okay. annoying conversations that you've had yeah. recently. Yeah. So I'm an atheist activist. My buddies and I go out to. Uh, local places and hold up our Ask an Atheist sign and secular humanism, good without God. And trying to engage believers, evangelical Christians and so forth to come talk to us. But the other day, I think this was two weeks ago, uh, a guy was coming by and he saw the sign, Ask an Atheist. And we always want people to come have dialogue with us. And uh, he wouldn't stop. He just kind of, while he was walking, turned to me, pointed, and said, it'll never happen. And I said, what? What will never happen? He goes, in your worldview, atheism, there is no moral standard. That There is no morality. <laughs> and I said, well, come back and talk to me. Please let me explain that to you, and so forth. And he goes, it'll never work. And he said, the very infamous, I'm praying for you. And <laughs> took off. Didn't even come back and talk to us. Yeah, so um, the the th- the reason that so well so first of all like we we're both big fans of the atheist experience show mm-hmm. so you can you can see a lot of examples of this on on the show where callers call in and you know act like people who don't want to have a, a real discussion mm-hmm. and uh, that's that's just like this this person that you're talking about mm-hmm. and. First of all, like he had, he had to get the last word in. Yeah. So he he didn't want to talk, but he did want to to yell at you. Yeah. As as he he was going by, and you know, yeah. not not to say that atheists can't be annoying, but it, yeah. it is not like you are like knocking knocking on people's doors like a Jehovah Witness. Mm, or you're maybe just, we should. Yeah, you're you're just you're just standing there. Yeah. Just offering a, a point of view if anyone is interested. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So he had to get get the last word in and mm-hmm. not not have have a discussion. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the reason that I'll pray for you is is so annoying is that it it really is uh, saying that I I will not entertain mm-hmm. what you believe. Mm-hmm. I am just talking about what I believe. And I, I'm not. I'm. I am pretending like, uh, like I, I'm. Uh, like you, you do not have a completely different yeah. view of the world. Yeah. And um, so there's a quote that I like from Aristotle, who mm-hmm. says, "The mark of an enlightened mind is the ability to entertain uh, a, a an idea without believing it." Hmm. And uh, when I first heard that, I was thinking, man, Aristotle has very, very low standards. But mm-hmm. actually, after I got out into the real world a little more, I realized that that is a really good uh, criterion 
to look for in in other people to see who 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 is a thinker mm-hmm. and if if you're just going around saying i'll pray for you mm-hmm. uh that is that is the opposite of that that's kind yeah. of like saying uh like i am going to uh uh just talk talk over your your yeah. viewpoint with with mine yeah. and try as hard as possible uh, not not to yeah. entertain it. <laughs> well, I was hoping he would come back so I could actually explain to him how I and you and I and others who identify as atheists get our morality, why we're moral and so forth. So he wouldn't give me that opportunity. But you said the last word of I'll pray for you. That's To me, it's very condescending. Uh, now, if they knew something happened in my life that was really bad, if I were sick and they really meant, you know, I'm praying for you, and they meant it in a good tone or way, I wouldn't say as much. But when they see you out there with an atheist sign, and they said, I'm praying for you, in other words, what they're saying is, you need to be fixed, you need to be repaired, right, or yeah, incomplete. That's, yeah, that's a good point. He, yeah. Clearly clearly, he was not uh, not uh, identifying with any any real problem that, yeah. that you have. He was just saying that uh, your, your position as a non-believer is is inherently an undesirable one yeah yeah and so just imagine if this person were to start doubting yeah and he he's kind of like uh if he if he if he is used to only interacting with other religious people mm-hmm. it, it's like he he doesn't know how to not be annoying mm-hmm. see so he he is going to have trouble making friends outside at at least until he learns mm-hmm. so I, I think this is this is one of the ways that they keep you in is they um uh so you know uh keep keeping you in in the cult group that's the 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 technique is uh yeah. keeping keeping you emotional around topics that um that uh, the 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 outside world doesn't doesn't let you be yeah. so emotional about. Yeah. Can See, I say one more? Yeah, yeah. Can one more experience? I shared this with you before. A couple weeks ago, my buddies and I were out under the bridge feeding homeless people. What a concept! An atheist feeding the homeless, right? And there are a lot of Christian groups out there. And I wear my uh, "This is what an atheist" T-shirt. It says that this is what an atheist looks like T-shirt. So we're doing our thing, passing out fruit, bottled water, clothing to homeless people. Because we're human beings, we don't need a God to do, to do those things. And this guy made a beeline right to me. He wasn't a homeless person. He was from the Baptist group over there feeding the homeless. He came straight up to me, looked at my t-shirt, and said, Aha! Uh-huh. He goes, What's this about? And I said, Well, I'm just out here putting a face on that which is being demonized, just like you guys are out here with your Jesus crosses and praying and all. It's equality, right? And freedom for all. And all of a sudden, he said to me, he looked me right in the eye and he said, you can't give. I said, what? What do you mean I can't give? He says, you can't give. Have you never read John three sixteen? I said, yeah. I didn't want to tell him I'm a former Christian preacher. I said, yeah, I've read John three sixteen, And he quoted it for me. Uh, God so loved the world that he gave. He goes, you're an atheist, therefore you cannot give. And I went, wow, I've never heard that one before. And I wanted yeah. to say, hey, hey, dude, <laughs> well, yeah, this, this I'm already giving. This conversation sounds particularly deranged to me, even for a Christian. Just yeah. <laughs> let me let me mention that. I don't think that I don't think that there I, there are tons of Christians uh, who are quite this this crazy. He was what I would call a fundamentalist evangelical. Because yeah. he did tell me, after he told me I couldn't be moral either without God, he did tell me, I'm just telling you what God says. So he just believes the Bible, literally. Yeah. No, and I, I, I really like... No, I mean, no, I'm saying he sounds particularly crazy to me, but nothing mm-hmm. nothing that he's doing is... Uh, is it's, 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 all, it's all the same kind of... Uh, Cult, cult member okay, behavior. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just, it's just more, more extreme than yeah. you might normally uh, right. expect to, to see. But I, I really like this thing about how he's like, oh, I didn't, I, I, I am absolving myself of all responsibility of everything 
that I'm saying to uh, to to uh, to annoy you with, and telling you that you you don't know how to give. That is that yeah. is an especially. Oh, he said you can't word. give. Yeah, you can't because you, you can't don't know give. God because yes. God gives. Yeah. Oh, and one more thing. He. Uh, oh yeah, and then he said. Oh, by the way, you can't be moral either. And then I said, dude, now you're ticking me off a little bit because he attacked my personal character. I normally don't lose it with them, but I got a little frustrated. I probably shouldn't have. And then he goes, aha, you're angry. See? See? In, but in his mind, mm-hmm. he is not responsible for you getting angry mm-hmm. at all because <laughs> he really thinks that he is just like objectively telling you the, the information, mm-hmm. you know, that the God wants. Yeah. So like... Like your your emotional re- reaction has uh, in in his mind is is completely disconnected mm-hmm. from from what he is saying, mm-hmm. and that's that is that is how how you are trained to be in in a cult, mm-hmm. um, and so if if you are well, we talked in an earlier episode about how cult members are kind of taught to to ignore their own. Uh, negative emotions so it, he that also prevents him from like uh, uh, realizing when he's being incredibly annoying because he's creating negative emotions mm-hmm. in you mm-hmm. uh, he but he's not he's not very good at, at thinking about that mm-hmm. he doesn't have a very good theory of mind um, so so first so first he absolves himself of all responsibility for what he's saying he's like this is just just what God wants. I am. Don't mm. don't kill the messenger. Right, right. And <laughs> and then then he's like, you you cannot be moral. <laughs> <laughs> but we are being moral. Look, I'm yeah, already, I guess I'll, debunk what you did. Refute what you just said. Look around. There are other atheists out here. We're yeah, out here all the right. time. Completely, completely ignoring the objective evidence yeah. that you well, are. I don't care about evidence. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all faith. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, well, I, I want to one one other thing. I want to well, and I have another example, and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit in clips from this this video that I think is is very uh, in, enlightening on, mm-hmm. on this topic. And there's a there's a Jehovah Witness uh, video for for children mm. where they uh, there's a little girl character, and she comes home from school and. Her mother learns that one of her friends at school has two mommies. Uh-oh. Okay, and the the mother starts teaching the girl about how uh, she needs to preach the the word of Jesus wow. to this friend of hers with two mommies. Yeah. So, um, and and of course, uh. Like what? What would be like a, a better way to to prime a child yeah. to have negative interactions with people on the outside mm-hmm. is to tell them and <laughs> just go go around. Um, uh, oh, and in the video, they 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 talk to the, the the little girl and they ask her like, what would be what would be a good way to to convince people to come over to Jehovah Witnesses. And she starts talking about evidence. No, she starts talking about their fantasy about after um, the the apocalypse, right? Because the Jeho- there's going to be uh, mm-hmm. the the end times, and then there's going to be a paradise earth mm-hmm. if you're a Jehovah Witness. Yeah. So she starts talking about the paradise earth. Mm-hmm. So this is like this is so crazy because you're telling you're telling this child that. That she has to go around and start telling all of her friends that they are living living their lives wrong, mm-hmm. and then just telling them about the the, the fantasy of mm-hmm. the the next world, the, mm-hmm. the paradise earth, right? So it's like <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it it is like uh, a a a way of making people hate you. And it's like you're not, you don't think about that when you're a child. Like you don't realize that that mm-hmm. is a natural consequence mm-hmm. of of what you're being taught. Like if you if you are not listening to to what the other person thinks, mm-hmm. which is you know if you're if you're just like telling them about a complete fantasy, and 
as as if you, you know that it's real, mm-hmm. you're certainly not listening to to what their their ideas are, mm-hmm. and and you're going around just telling telling them that uh, their their um, the rules by by which they are living their lives are, are wrong. And they need to be mm-hmm. overhauled. That is that is obviously not not a way to to make friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and if pe- excuse me, if people do criticize, like that little girl, if some of her friends in school were to criticize her or abstain from a relationship with her, she would be thinking just like she's taught in a cult like Christianity that you're being persecuted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessed are, remember Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for great shall their reward be in heaven. So she could just say, I'm persecuted for Jesus. Right, yeah, yeah. no, that is, that is exactly. That's what, that's, that's what cults yes. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should have a, we need an episode on that eventually. Yeah, but, poor but, persecuted. But, yeah, like, uh, that, that is, that is, that is another, uh, step in the, uh, in, in the insanity is, um, mm-hmm. every time, you you have negative interactions with people outside mm-hmm. because of acting crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you say, "Well, this uh, now now I am being persecuted." So, yeah. um, so that's just a, an encouragement to to go back to into the group and to do more more group group things together yeah. instead yeah. of uh, you know. So uh, instead of instead of learning learning new behavior that is actually going to mm-hmm. uh, you know make make things easier for for real you know nothing's new in their worldview it's all absolute truth in fact right here from that book yeah called the Holy Bible you notice my new title yes the adult book of fairy tales fables absurdities and atrocities I use this in my show it's kind of fun but yeah. So that's their worldview. Well, anyway, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for joining me on how they keep you in. My and, pleasure. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to do another episode eventually. <laughs> we will.